Good morning, banana meters. Today we're going to do a little bit of perspective stuff. I thought that would be fun and it's good for everybody, so share with your non-animator friends. This might be my last video for a minute because we're moving on Wednesday. One thing that baffled me in perspective, and this is this is some pretty beginner stuff. If you are advanced, you will be like, of course, I know this. But I grew up in a place called Newfoundland. Didn't have a lot of art. Didn't have a lot of instruction. I didn't know this stuff, so... Pfft. Don't, be so, don't think you're so special. I'm very tired. Okay, so we're going to start with our train tracks. This is like your beginner train track perspective exercise, and it's great. It's, this is a great exercise to do if you're learning perspective. You want to learn how to do it the technical way. But what baffled me is where do you put the next track? So you have a couple tracks like this. Where does the next one go? So this is where the X comes in. The X is a very important tool in perspective because it can be used in basically a million ways to help you figure out where everything's supposed to be going. So I have a clean line and I have a rough line. I'm just going to use very clinical lines for all of this because I can't be bothered to freehand straight lines this morning. So what we do is we go from corner to corner, then we go from the center point to our vanishing point. And if I'm being a good student, I'm labeling vanishing point one right there then you go from this corner the outer corner through the center where it meets the track so from first track to the next track draw a straight line through this is where our next track goes so i'm going to switch to my clean draw a clean track switch to my rough switch back to my blue go from this corner through the center again you don't need to draw more x's here Boop. And then I'm going to draw my clean. I'm using X to switch from my foreground color to my background color. I'm using I'm using Photoshop today. This is good for everything, though. You need your ruler if you're going to do it on paper, but it works just as well. I use Photoshop because that's what we use at work for the background. So it's my drawing program. I've been using it for a long, long time. Back since I was a little baby animator. I've been using it for 20 years. Wow. <laughs> I just realized my first tablet drawing tablet i got i was 15 years old i'm turning 35 next week quarantine birthday i'm excited i'll be in newfoundland but i won't be out of quarantine i have to do a two week like very intensive quarantine there i'm not allowed to leave my mother-in-law's basement <laughs> no i'm allowed to go in her backyard but that's as far as i'm allowed to go okay so here we go that's how you get your next track you go from corner to corner to corner so the, the great thing about this is it works for everything. So here, maybe instead of a train track, we have some sort of a fence, you see. So what I'm going to do is go from the corner of the fence here, draw it back. So that's where our fence is going. That's kind of the obvious stuff. And now we can bring these vertically. So this looks very, very clinical because I'm using uh, computer straight lines. But what you can do once you have all this done, let's go back to our clean, is you can freehand your lines if you don't want, if that's not the style you're going for. Like if you want this to look a little bit like a drawing, then you could go through and freehand your perspective like this. Boop, boop, this is not super great. But then when you remove your rough, you have your lines. Oh, look, I've not been doing it correctly. Oh no. There's your lines. And you say, oh, these look like shadows. Well, there's actually a way to do your shadows as well. What you need for your shadows, let's just pretend all this ground stuff isn't there. What you need is a sun. So I'll just put a little sun here and then I'll have its vanishing point be in the center. But it's, it would probably pay if your sun is higher in the sky. And then on our rough, we're gonna do this. And we're going to draw from our sun vanishing point through the center or through the base, like where our little dudes hit the ground like this. And that will give us our thing. Okay. And you said, so then you're saying how far, how far down this line does it go? So then we go from the sun through this guy. Again, I can't use this line to move like this. Okay, and then you draw a horizontal line because this is one point perspective. Horizontal will give you 
the from the sun vanishing point to the ground to the base. So here is the baseline. Here is from the sun here to there. So then that tells you the distance of that. You can use that move to determine where they would meet. Hope that makes sense. So I can use that to make sure all my little shadows. Let's use the clean. And because our sun is so close, it's a very distorted, long shadow. But now it has um, just not, not a, a completely arbitrary place for all this stuff, if that makes sense. Just using our little X's and using these like, boop, boop, boop. That was off topic. I was talking about X's. What else can your X do? Boop. Our X can help us with circles. Here's our X. We want to draw a circle on the ground like this. How do we draw a circle in this perspective? Well, let me show you. <laughs> you do your X. Let's switch to our blue again. It's a nice little blue. Corner to corner, corner to corner. And then from the center down, like this. And now our circle is going to land on these dots. We're going to do a horizontal center. So these are the corners, say, of our circle. But what we can do to further elaborate on, like, where does the circle go here? So we want it's going to be out here somewhere. Where is that place? Okay, so what you can actually do is subsect it again and go from here to here. So from the halfway point to the one quarter point, and that'll give you the location of that part of your circle. Okay, and you can drag that along like this, drag that along back here and over here, and that'll give you, so then you can just use that to kind of figure out where that outer circle will be. And then your circle is going to be flat on the ground. Really good. You also have the X. You see, here's, here's our little house. So it goes back in perspective. You can use your X to find the center of your house. So this is a very long house going back into perspective. Here's the halfway point. And then if you wanted to put your door there, say you knew you've got this little house like this, your door is in the halfway point. We just found that with our X. And then you want to see how big the door is. So here's another halfway point. So this is half, this is a quarter, this is one eighth. So it's just a little bit shy. It's like favoring your one third, your one eighth section here. So you can actually subsect this down. So there's your quarter. There's your eighth, so your door is a little bit smaller than that. So you can even, I like to do that and then get rid of your stuff. Perspective of the door. And again, you can say this is half, then subsect it again. Say this is a quarter. So get rid of all those lines. Here's where it is. That's where your door is. If you want it to be the same size as this door here. It's just because it's distorted, it's very hard to guess. Right. And then if you have your door like this, you can say, OK, I want my window halfway boop like this and then quarter. So this is where I want my window, same height and then your half that. So you keep using these X's. I'm doing a little bit of a sloppy job, but you can subsect using X's as many times as you need. So here's your half. Here's your half. And this works in perspective. Here's your half again, like that. So by doing this, I can use my door as my first section. And then I know I want, if my window's half, that's the center point of my window, right? So here we've got some subsection already. We're going to use the top of the door to measure the top of the window. And then if we wanted to subsect over here, we could. And that puts us here. So that's how this window and this window will be the same size is by using fractions or like a relative distance. If you know this is approximately one quarter, one eighth 
of the length of the building, you can find that. And this seems very tedious and painful. And you're like, well, Tracy, can I just eyeball it? And if you're new, you cannot. You cannot eyeball things. You do not trust your eyes. Some people have an inherent sense of it. And if you find that you can measure your building after it's done, and these are very close on the ball, then you probably, you can do it less. But for people, for most people, you do not have some magic inherent sense of perspective. It's not something you're born with. It's something that you learn doing this, doing the X's, dividing things, keeping an eye on your perspective line, always going back here religiously, religiously with your ruler and your eyes will get better. You will have a better sense of it as you grow it. It doesn't, it's, it's not, it will grow. You'll get better, but you have to do it the hard way first. So speaking of the hard way, let's use the same thing in two point perspective. Boom, boom. Here's my vanishing point two. VP one. Here you go. Perspective teacher VP two. And I have my train track going back. Here's my second train track. So we have to go religiously back to our vanishing point. How do you find the next one? Let's use, I'm drawing on my rough. I'm going to put this on the clean. I'm going to use the rough, even though it doesn't look clean. I'm going to have even more roughity roughs. Let's put that on the rough. Crisscross. Then we're going to take it from the vanishing point. Move. And when we use our line tool, we can get way back there. Now we're going to go from the X through the center point. See? through From the X through the center point we just found to here. That's our next one. And then this religiously back to our point. Corner through the center over here and then back to our vanishing point. Try and be a little bit more precise. I'm being sloppy. Doot, 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 like that. So I'm going to go all the way down. See these? This is sloppy. <laughs> this is not going through the center. So I'm going to have a little bit of distortion, but I feel like that's an acceptable amount of distortion for a quick demo and then you can draw your things in. If you don't want super crisp lines, obviously just freehand your clean and then when you get rid of your rough, all of your stuff is exactly where it should be. You could even do, if you wanted to go so far as to measure these ones as well, you could, but that's up to you. The important thing is they're getting progressively smaller as they go back in space. And then from there, you can do your verticals. Vertical, vertical. And I'll go back to the vanishing point. Vertical, vertical. I'm going to add my little things. And then I'm going to go back to my vanishing point. Then in my clean, I will take those. So we can see how far down we go. Then we go over to our, that's how far down we go. We go across. So when you are learning, cannot emphasize this enough. You have to go through this tedious rhetoric of every single one of your lines and your little pieces and stuff. Like, I don't know if you can see this, but these are actually, there's a twist here that I can see because my cleans were not super clean. You can see that I um, was sloppy when I was creating it. And now I can see a twist in these because this, I mean, anyone should be able to see this. Let's get rid of my new line. This one is smaller than this one because I was not careful. So when you're starting out, start very, very strict with yourself, make these vanishing points, follow them religiously, even for tiny things, even for just the little like width of the tracks, the um, every bit of spacing. If you're measuring a character, if you have, let's say we have a little cactus, we want to put some perspective in here using some little plants. So here's my little cactus friend. I'm going to bring him back in perspective. And I'm going to have another little cactus friend. Approximately the same height. It doesn't have to be exactly the same height because it's an organic thing. But by keeping them close, you tell I don't live anywhere near a cactus. What does a cactus look like? It looks like a spiky butt. I I apologize. <laughs> but keeping your other seven perspectives is going to help build you some sort of building depth. But what we can also do is we can take this cactus back in this direction. It's this tall. Let's give it its own little layer. It's this tall. We're going to move it vertically. 
like this. And then we can decorate our little cactus however we seem fit. So this is like a cross section of this hill. Okay. And then like that. So our because our cactus is going up on the hill, it's going to gain that height, but it's going to gain it in perspective. So it's going to go back this far, and then it's going to go up that far. Okay, hopefully that makes sense. That's just a little bit of the stuff you start playing with, and it really just sit down and make a little cactus land with some train tracks, make a little house, build some little, just with little windows and stuff. Don't go crazy with details, start with simple concepts figure out how this stuff works and get very comfortable with it because the more you do it the hard way the long way the more you will see those vanishing points it'll start to go into the back of your brain so now i can draw an x in my head i think it's about there and then when i draw it i'm not that far off so when i do something like i'll get this much distortion because i'm off a little bit but because I've been doing this so long, I can see that distortion as well. So I'll know when I have to go back and measure things and sh just tighten them up a little bit. But don't guess when you're starting out. There's no benefit. You don't get better by guessing. You get better by seeing it done correctly over and over and over again. You'll start to get better. You'll start to, your eyes will improve, I promise. Okay, so that's it. Um, I'm not sure if I'll have one for next week because we're moving on Wednesday. Well, we're moving, we're going to Newfoundland on Wednesday and then ugh, there's a the whole thing. So I'll try my best. We'll see. Like, share, subscribe, all those things internet people ask you to do. And I will see you next video.